Today I'm going to tell you how to pass your amateur radio or ham radio license in the easiest, fastest and most interactive way possible. Some of you might be saying, well, what's the point of getting an amateur radio license? Well, there are many benefits. You can uh, have worldwide friendships. It's good for emergency communications. You can use it for experimentation, joining social groups and clubs, um, having ham radio off grid, having it uh, in the vehicle when you're out and about. There is a multitude of different things that you can do with amateur radio. This is ham radio prep. Ham radio prep offer online courses, online license courses, and as they mentioned, to make it fast, easy, and fun to get your amateur radio license. Just a couple of hours of study time, and you can pass your exam. Uh, they also have this guarantee that if you pass your exam on your first try, all your money back will be guaranteed. So the in the United States, there are three levels of license. The entry-level license is the technician license. Then you got the general license, which is the mid-tier license level and then you've got the amateur extra license so whether you're uh, becoming an amateur radio operator for the first time or you're looking to upgrade your license then there is a course available on ham radio prep for each of these so these are the prices of the three courses you've got the technician license course for $35 you can get just the technician and general license course which is $55 or you can get all three levels technician general and extra for $79 and you also get the, uh, a couple of extra features such as the Baofeng Basics course as well uh, included in that one. Now, if you want to save a further 20% off of these courses, then you can do by using my affiliate code, which is HAMDX in the checkout once you order the course. And that, again, as I mentioned, will save you 20%. So there is a link below in the description to use that. So this is what my portal looks like at the moment. You can see here that I've got 0% progress on both technician and general because I'm already a, a US general qualified licensee. So I didn't uh, need to do this. However, I am studying my amateur extra course here at the moment and my current progress is 35%. So I'm about one third the way through and I'm finding that this uh, study method of study is a lot more suitable for me. I've before had problems like reading from a book or problems just like reading questions and then trying to look for the answers. This is a little bit more interactive and a lot more my style of learning. You might be a little bit different, but I'll show you anyway uh, what you get with ham radio prep and whether it's suitable for you or not, you can um, decide. Let's have a look at the technician license course. If I click on that, we will get a beginner's video which will pop up welcoming you to the technician license course. Let me go through here the lessons. So let's go to lesson one. So this is what happens. It's broken down here and you can go and search through all of the lessons. You don't need to see them in order if you don't want to, but it will go through a video. And then once you've gone through the video, it will give you a text version of the video, which has all of the necessary phrases and things that you need to remember, especially for the license exam. And then there is a quiz here at the end and you get graded as you go through all of these lessons. Um, try to aim, I think it's definitely aim for over 75%, but you want to be getting closer to sort of 90, 95% on these. Uh, and once you've got all those, then you have here at the end some more practice tests, some more question generators, and that's when you can then register in person for your exam. Uh, let's go to something that I'm very interested in, Introduction to the Atmosphere. If I click on Introduction to the Atmosphere video, uh, here's an interactive video which shows you basically how signals are traveling at the moment and you want to talk to a repeater. So that's showing sort of stuff that you've already learned, I guess, earlier on in the course let's just skip ahead a little bit then they start to go into what the ionosphere is and you can see here at the bottom that there are uh, subtitles or um, the words here on the screen so it makes it just that little bit easier and you can see this uh, just sporadic e here in blue this is the highlighted blues because it is a special term for you to remember and uh, and also uh, it will be on the exam or uh, well, those phrases will be used on the exam. So it just helps you to just remember the portions that you need to, to uh, for the exam. So you can see they're talking about here sporadic E on different frequencies as well, how that actually works. Uh, and don't worry if it goes too fast because you can go back and you can re-watch 
this again um, if you need to. You can watch it, rewatch it as many times as you need, and you can go and do the quiz as many times as you need. You can see here, here's another one. Let me just go back to that bit. UHF signals are usually not reflected by the ionosphere, so that's might come up as a question. So that way you can remember that that's the most important part uh, that you need to remember for the exam. And one thing that I've always found with amateur radio is is that you seem to learn more in practice, in in the practical sense. As you're starting to, you don't you don't do the exam and you learn everything there is to know about amateur radio at the exam time. The exam time is just to make sure that you're proficient, that you keep things safe, and that you've learnt the basics about electronics and how amateur radio works and then from there you can go into more in depth into these other areas uh, such as this one talking about the atmosphere so you can see here knife edge diffraction that's a question that might come up uh, talks about what knife edge diffraction is knife edge diffraction if you read just the blue bits knife edge diffraction tries to find a path that reflects signals to the repeater over obstructions uh, talking here more about the ionosphere so all of these things just go through them at your own pace um, here's the diagrams and the photos and the interactive portion which is a lot easy to relatively easy to follow you can go in and do a question and answer session you go through here and answer all of these questions uh, here's an example why are simplex UHF signals rarely heard beyond their beyond their horizon and I mentioned before there was that bit about the ionosphere UHF signals aren't affected by the ionosphere so we just click that one, confirm, it says that we're correct, the answer is correct and then it gives the actual answer to the question or explains a little bit more in detail. So I've just gone through and answered those questions and you can see there that I got 94%. I can retake the exam again or I can continue. So 94% is pretty good. If you get anything lower than I think 70, 75%, then it'll say that it recommends that you go back through and then you can retake the quiz again. Now, Ham Radio Prep also have a study app as well, so you don't need to just use the web browser. You can study on the go using your device for Google or iOS. They also have available practice exams as well, which you can take for free. You don't even need to enroll in a course as well. So you can uh, check that out using the app. There's also the Baofeng Basics as well. So once you've got your technician license course you can uh, and, and you've passed your uh, technician license then you can go through here and learning all about setting up the Baofeng UV5R which let's be honest is one of the most um, popular radios out there it goes through here all through the programming of the radio making the first call on the repeater what are repeaters how they work finding them in your local area um, the call signs and you can see interactive cool little graphics here which show you how it all works which is fantastic because that's the way I learned the best is through uh, graphics like that, crossband repeaters, what makes a repeater a repeater, uh, making your first call on the repeater, uh, programming your Baofeng. Here we go. Let's go to programming the receive frequency. You can see here that we've got a video which we can watch of the programming. We can see here step by step how to set up the programming, how to find the frequencies and all this sort of stuff. So it's really good for beginners so that's Baofeng basics finally i wanted to introduce you to world radio league this is from the creators of ham radio prep this is a advanced logbook contests and awards website um, it's also a great community and educational resource as well and uh, this is uh, what my dashboard looks like here i'm logged in at the moment this is showing all of uh contacts that are currently being logged and going on around the world you can spin the globe around and have a bit of a look around here uh, so yeah you can go in here and you can use this as a logbook or you can import your own adi files you can also check out leaderboards here as well so you can see here that we've got a weekly and an all-time leaderboard which loads up and shows all of the contacts that are happening at the moment the longest distance by modes um, here's us states as well um, the countries, the leaderboards, this is, mind you, I'm talking about the week. Let's go back to all time here. We got quite a few here. We got N, N6RPR, who's currently got 1,026 uh, contacts logged here on the World Radio League logbook. Um, all of these contacts here going on, and you can sort of hover over these and who's leading in each territory. So that's pretty cool. 
Uh, who's leading for the country? Who's leading for Australia? Oscar VK3TX is currently leading for Australia. So I need to start importing some of my logs so that I can get up there on the leaderboard. This is still in development at the moment and they've even incorporated live contesting here. Uh, at the moment, there's no contest that are currently going there was recently completed contest but i think this is all still in the testing phase but this looks really cool for live contesting uh, the other thing which also is very helpful is the world radio league community and this is also handy for those who are doing ham radio prep courses because you can go in here you can introduce yourself it's a safe friendly place to ask questions um, to help with your exam, uh, with anyone, any questions that you might have about amateur radio. There's all these different topics in here as well. So if you've used ham radio prep, then please let me know in the comments below what you thought. Drop also your call sign too. That'd be cool to find out. If you're completely brand new and you're still not convinced and you want to know some of the cool things that you can do with amateur radio, well then I've got some videos that will appear right here which will show you some of those cool things that you can experiment with. So check those out next.